Okay, hopefully uh, there will be no more disturbances. And uh, I, I should say that also we have um, in, in the end of one of the corridors, there is a lecture room 3.2, which uh, lecturers can use. It's booked for if you need to sit or prepare between lectures and so on. There is uh, another lecture room where one can sit. Uh, so, um, okay, and then now we have um, the second lecture after which we will have a uh, uh, lunch break. Uh, the second lecture, Professor Yuri Luchko, he is a uh, well-known expert uh, also in the fractional calculus, but also uh, mathematical modeling, differential equations, integral equations, special functions. Uh, so that, uh, I remember many years ago I was reading the paper by, uh, trying to understand the paper by Luchko and Gary Floor about uh, operational methods for constructing solutions to high-order fractional uh, uh, equations, uh, uh, Hashi problems. So here we are, so he is from Berlin University of Applied Sciences uh, and Technology in Germany, and uh, here is lecture courses about fractional calculus operators with single kernels. So. <coughs> So, first of all, let me thank the organizers of this uh, very nice summer school and in particular Professor Ruzhansky for providing all of us with this uh, beautiful opportunity to meet each other after pandemic times and uh, to finally discuss some mathematical problems. Uh, uh, my today's uh, uh, talk uh, and uh, uh, also talks uh, uh, tomorrow are devoted to, to the topic fractional calculus operators with singular kernels. Uh, like uh, many other uh, topics in fractional calculus, this topic is simultaneously a, a very old one uh, and a new one uh, because uh, the first publications devoted to this topic were published already uh, several hundred years ago, uh, but uh, uh, <coughs> only during the last uh, maybe uh, five years, uh, ten years, uh, <coughs> a lot of attention was put uh, to this uh, topic. Uh, today and tomorrow I'm going to discuss uh, several uh, <coughs> topics related to, uh, to uh, <coughs> to the uh, general fractional integrals and derivatives with the singular kernels. I hope uh, we can manage uh, to discuss all of these topics. Uh, at least I will do my best uh, to, uh, uh, to proceed with all of them. Uh, and uh, <coughs> let, let me uh, start uh, first with some uh, <coughs> prehistory information uh, that started, uh, devoted to this topic, that started with uh, these two papers uh, written by uh, Niels uh, Henrik Abel about 200 years ago. Uh, the first paper uh, is in, uh, <coughs> uh, in Norwegian language uh, and uh, published in a uh, local, more or less local uh, uh, journal. Uh, so it's not, not, not so easy to, to get it. Uh, and the second uh, paper uh, was published in, in the famous uh, uh, journal, uh, German journal, Zeitschrift für Reine und Angewandte Mathematik. Uh, it's a, a paper in, uh, in German language. Uh, so uh, also no, not uh, everybody can, can uh, read and understand German. Uh, but some years ago, uh, Professor Padlubny with some co-authors uh, translated uh, both uh, uh, of these papers into English and uh, there is a very nice publication uh, article uh, in the uh, uh, journal Fractional Calculus and Applied Analysis with translation of these papers and with some comments. So I would recommend you to read this space, uh, this uh, papers. And uh, in these papers I will uh, consider it and also solve the so-called generalized Totochrome problem. Uh, Totochrome uh, uh, comes from Greek. Prefix uh, to, toto meaning same and chronotime. Uh, 
uh, <coughs> because the pro uh, the pro this problem is a mechanical problem, uh, and uh, <coughs> uh, the problem is to find to find a curve uh, uh, with the following characteristic: if if uh, we um, uh, take an object uh, uh, a point moving uh, along this curve uh, uh, without friction uh, and uh, just uh, under influence of, uh, uh, of gravity, uniform gravity, then the moving time, the sliding time of this point to the end point should, uh, should be the same for, for all points uh, of this form. Yeah? Not a problem for... Uh, it's a very interesting uh, uh, problem, uh, and uh, this problem was uh, solved, in fact, uh, 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 200 uh, uh, years uh, before Abel uh, by, the, uh, by the very uh, interesting and, uh, in fact, beautiful mind uh, uh, scientist Christian uh, Huygens, uh, who used uh, uh, some advanced geomet geometrical methods uh, to solve this problem. By the way, uh, uh, the, pay, uh, the works by uh, Huygens are also avail available in internet. I would recommend you uh, to read them. Beautiful. Uh, and uh, uh, what, uh, uh, what Huygens derived is that uh, uh, the protocol uh, 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 can be described as a suitable part of the cycloid, uh, another famous core, uh, already known in the, uh, starting from the ancient times. Well, uh, what was done in the papers by Abel? Uh, Abel uh, solved and considered, in fact, the so-called uh, uh, generalized autochrome uh, problem, more general problem. Uh, uh, and solved it by means of some analytical methods. And the problem that uh, Abel considered was uh, the following one. So suppose uh, that uh, we have a uh, given function, monotone function, uh, key, de uh, de depend, uh, that depends on y, and y uh, is the height of the, or location of the, po of the point at this curve between uh, two points. A and B, uh, and uh, 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 the problem that uh, Abel considered uh, is uh, to find uh, form of uh, of the curve with the following uh, characteristics. So the sliding time of uh, uh, a point at the location one or y uh, until the end point uh, B uh, should be should be given by this given function uh, t. Uh, of y. Uh, of course, the uh, total chrome problem is a particular case of this more general problem with the constant sliding type t. Uh, and uh, <coughs> to solve the problem, uh, Abel derived uh, a formula for the sliding time. Uh, it's very easy, in fact, no problem, uh, based on some uh, basic um, uh, movement uh, equations. Uh, on the Newton equation, for example, or uh, uh, energy considerations. So it's not difficult to do this. And in this formula, uh, S of uh, H uh, is the uh, length of the curve between the point H and the, uh, and the low, uh, lowest point. Uh, so uh, in this case, uh, uh, the curve uh, is uh, uh, characterized by the so-called uh, Natural uh, uh, in the in, uh, in the uh, through the uh, na natural parameterization uh, and uh, 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 if the curve is given the form of the curve, uh, curve is given it's not a problem to uh, to calculate uh, this function s of h uh, as the length of the curve and uh, calculate this integral and then uh, we get the uh, the time the sliding time. But of course, Abel uh, considered the inverse problem, uh, so the uh, left-hand side is given, uh, and uh, he uh, he wanted to uh, to determine this uh, uh, unknown function, uh, the form of the curve, uh, first the length of the curve, and then of course, uh, based on the length of the curve, uh, one can determine the uh, equation, the the curve equation. 
And in fact, I will consider it a more general uh, integral differential equation uh, in this form. You see here that uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the initial equation is a particular case of this equation uh, in the case alpha is equal to one half. Uh, but I will solve this general equation. Uh, and uh, in the modern notation, surprisingly, uh, the uh, right-hand si side of the uh, Abel integral equation is called uh, Caputo fractional derivative, uh, even if uh, Caputo uh, didn't in introduce this form at all. Uh, I will show you uh, the formula introduced by Caputo. Uh, and uh, uh, this one uh, uh, <coughs> confusion here in the terminology, and another confusion is that uh, 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 this formula, uh, uh, this is the Abel solution to this integral differential equation uh, because according to this uh, mechanical model, uh, this initial condition phi of zero is equal to zero was posed and uh, I will solve this, this equation together with this condition and derive this formula. Uh, and uh, in the modern, uh, modern literature, uh, the Abel integral equation is referred to uh, as to this object, yeah? but in fact, Abel solved uh, another equation. Yeah? Uh, well, <clears throat> nothing to do. And uh, uh, the right-hand side of the Abel solution uh, is called nowadays, uh, is referred to nowadays as the riemann weil fractional integral of the order alpha. Uh, but the story uh, started uh, from the works of uh, Abel uh, in reality. Well, uh, what are fractional integrals and derivatives? It's a difficult question. Uh, it's an open problem. Uh, how to describe fractional derivatives and integrals? Nowadays, there are many uh, uh, different kinds, many operators that are referred to as the fractional integrals and derivatives. But what are these objects? Uh, in fact, during the last uh, maybe 10 years uh, in the fractional calculus community, we have very uh, active discussions regarding this topic. Uh, what operators can be called fractional integrals or derivatives? What operators cannot be called? Uh, it's not, not, not so clear. You know? There are uh, already several contributions to this uh, topic and uh, uh, some pa uh, papers, but, but still the, the discussion is in, in progress. But uh, the general idea is very, very clear. So um, uh, <coughs> we have here a sequence of the integer order derivatives and the se sequence of uh, the definite, uh, repeated definite integrals. Uh, and the idea is to, to interpolate uh, the sequence of, of operators to the orders of non-integer order. And the story is very, very long, so already cl classics of the calculus like Leibniz, Euler, Laplace, Fourier, Abel, and so on and so on, contributed to this uh, topic and uh, uh, published uh, uh, some papers, uh, suggested uh, some approaches, and uh, developed uh, the theory. So uh, the theory is uh, more or less old, but uh, as uh, you probably know, within the last years, uh, there is a kind of hype uh, uh, around uh, the theory and uh, not, uh, <coughs> not uh, any paper devoted to this uh, topic uh, is worth for reading, unfortunately, nowadays. And uh, in my talk, uh, I try to uh, present, to present some ideas related to the so-called general fractional integrals and derivatives with the singular kernels, of, of course. Uh, and uh, Professor Kiryakov already mentioned that uh, these are uh, objects that in include uh, the operators uh, that, the, uh, that uh, uh, she showed us in uh, her lecture. Well, uh, uh, what are the most popular, uh, at least time, fractional integral and derivatives? Uh, you, you, are, you, probably, uh, you are probably aware of uh, of the so-called fractional uh, differential equations, uh, especially partial fractional differential equations. And uh, for the formulations of these equations, you need, uh, of course, time fractional and space fractional uh, 
derivatives. Uh, and uh, uh, it turned out that uh, there are uh, uh, differences, yeah? uh, uh, strong differences between uh, approaches to uh, both of these operators in the theory of the space fractional um, derivatives, the so-called uh, his derivatives, failure derivatives uh, of fractional uh, Laplacian operators are actively used, and in the theory of the time fractional integrals and derivatives, uh, kind of convolution type integral differential operators is used. And first of all, this uh, riemann liouville fractional integral that was derived by Abel already. And by the way, uh, we have here a singular case, yeah? uh, because uh, uh, this formula uh, cannot be used uh, uh, in the case alpha is equal to uh, zero. So we have, in fact, two different definitions. Of course, they are connected, because uh, uh, if you consider sequence of these operators, if uh, 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 when alpha uh, tends to zero, uh, for example, in the framework uh, of uh, uh, LP uh, spaces, uh, then it can be shown that under some conditions on these uh, functional spaces, the sequence of these operators tends to identity operator uh, when alpha tends to zero. So this definition, second definition, is uh, not uh, is natural one, uh, but still is uh, singular. The singular case. Uh, well, uh, and then the so called women fractional derivatives in this form are used as uh, composition of the, uh, of the integral order derivative uh, and uh, the women fractional integral and the so called Caputo fractional derivative that is, of course, uh, uh, that was not introduced by, by Caputo but is referred uh, to as the Caputo fractional derivative is actively uh, used. And uh, what was done by Caputo is that uh, in his uh, papers devoted to some uh, mo uh, models in the framework of the linear viscoelasticity, uh, he used uh, the Laplace, uh, uh, an operator uh, uh, that is defined by the uh, right-hand side of this formula, in fact. Yeah? So he used, uh, introduced uh, so-called uh, Caputo fractional derivative in, in the Laplace domain, and of course, he didn't uh, uh, work with this uh, formula in the time domain. But anyway, Caputo was uh, one of the first science, scientists of, after Abel, of course. <laughs> he used this, uh, uh, he used, uh, uh, used this form uh, for applications. <laughs> well, um, uh, what was the idea behind uh, Abel's solution uh, to his integral or integral differential equation. Uh, the main idea uh, was uh, to use uh, this very simple uh, formula uh, for the power law kernels H alpha and H1 minus alpha. H alpha is a power law function in this form uh, divided by the gamma function. Uh, and uh, in fact, uh, Abel used repeated integration and the Dirichlet formula and uh, uh, to derive uh, his solution he used uh, just the simple fact that the convolution, Laplace convolution of these two functions uh, is identically equal to 1. It's just a, a, a beta, so-called beta function or a particular case of the Euler beta function. Very uh, easy to calculate this integral. Uh, and the Laplace convolution uh, is, uh, of course, as follows. Yeah? Uh, in the presentation of uh, uh, Professor Kiryakova, uh, she uh, showed us some operators, uh, uh, fractional order operators, uh, uh, in the form of the Mellin convolution. Uh, you, you remember that the operators uh, that uh, Professor Kiryakova showed us, uh, they uh, at another form, so-called Mellin convolution, that looks like this. Oh, and in particular, uh, if uh, if we take some uh, functions uh, that uh, uh, that are defined. Uh, uh, that are not that are defined uh, on the uh, whole positive real, real axis, uh, but uh, that are uh, 
uh, zeros here at the interval uh, for, for the parameter values uh, uh, greater than t, then we, we get the operators uh, that uh, Professor Kiryakova showed us. Yeah? So in, in particular, uh, if the kernels uh, are taken in the, in the form uh, power, uh, power function, maybe um, something like uh, 1 minus t to the plus uh, alpha to the power uh, to the power alpha minus 1 and maybe phi of t. And this plus means that this function uh, is a power function uh, for, uh, for the parameter uh, values t uh, from 0 to 1 and 0 uh, for, the, uh, for the values uh, of t greater than, than 1. This is a function of this kind. And then we, we get here, of course, uh, uh, not plus infinity, but, but this uh, value t. It's uh, fractional calculus operators in the form of the Mellin convolution. Very important form, and of course, uh, uh, we can use here the whole machinery of the Mellin integral transform and derive uh, many, many useful things. Uh, and of course, these two forms are also related. Yeah? So there is a relation between uh, the Laplace convolution and the Mellin convolution. But uh, in my talk, I will focus, focus on the Laplace convolution. Uh, the next, uh, next step in the history uh, was a publication by the Russian mathemat mathematician Sonin uh, in the famous uh, journal Actum Mathematica uh, in uh, 18... 1884, uh, where Sonin uh, recognized that uh, the main uh, component of Abel's solution uh, was this convolution formula, uh, and Sonin uh, introduced uh, the uh, class of pairs of functions, kappa and k, uh, with the property that the Laplace convolution is identically equal to 1. And uh, once uh, you have uh, uh, these uh, functions that are nowadays referred, uh, referred to as the Sonin kernels, and this uh, formula is referred to as the Sonin condition, in the theory of the integral transforms, uh, the Sonin kernels were also very ex extensively used. They are connected uh, to the so-called Fourier kernels uh, uh, that are also very important in the theory of integral transform. So it's uh, uh, something that uh, was already used uh, in the theory of special function, in the theory of the integral transforms. Uh, and uh, uh, with uh, these kernels, K and Kappa, uh, uh, Sonin uh, uh, solved uh, an integral equation of the Laplace convolution type uh, with the kernel function uh, Kappa. Uh, and the solution uh, was derived in form uh, of uh, an uh, integral differential operator. So it's uh, a first order derivative applied to the integral operator of the same type, but with the kernel k. <coughs> with the kernel k, and uh, evidently in the case kappa and k satisfy, uh, uh, satisfy the Sonin condition, uh, then uh, the solution can be derived very easily. So uh, we just uh, uh, <coughs> calculate the convolution of k with the function f. It's this one. And then we have here the double convolution, uh, k uh, <coughs> convolution with uh, kappa uh, is equal to 1. And convolution of 1 with, uh, with the function phi is, of course, definite integral. Uh, and then to, to determine this function phi, uh, we, we just uh, differentiate this integral with respect to the variable t. So uh, it's uh, an elementary derivation. Uh, and Sonin did it uh, to show uh, the idea, the main idea uh, of the method of Abel. But of course, uh, uh, of course, Sonin did it more or less formally, without functional spaces, without uh, uh, formal proofs. 
but uh, one more uh, of his contribution uh, contribution is that uh, he uh, derived uh, some uh, uh, derived some very useful uh, pairs of uh, of the sonian kernels and uh, uh, the first pair uh, is, is this one uh, that was used uh, by Abel already, the pair of two power law functions. And Sonin derived, for example, this famous pair of the functions uh, uh, where uh, 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 G is uh, the Bessel function and Y is the modified Bessel function. So they also built uh, a pair of the Sonin kernels and nowadays uh, uh, in the fractional calculus, the Mittag-Leffler functions are very popular, uh, for example, and uh, uh, in some publications, uh, uh, my, uh, in my publications and uh, related publications, several other uh, interesting and useful so in, uh, kernel spares were derived. For example, this one, so uh, the function kappa is uh, sum of two power law functions, so it means that the fractional integral is just a, a sum of, of two riemann lewy fractional integrals. And then uh, the fractional derivative, the inverse operator, uh, <coughs> has the Mittag-Leffler function in the kernel. It's also more or less a new kind of uh, fractional derivatives. Uh, there are already some papers devoted to this object, to the fractional derivatives with uh, this kernel. Uh, power law function multiplied with the Mittag-Leffler function. And of course, uh, uh, this kernel is also singular, singular uh, at the point zero. Uh, I forgot to, uh, to, to, to put your attention to, to the fact, the simple fact, that uh, uh, if the kernels uh, K and Kappa satisfy the Sonian condition, satisfy this convolutional relation, then they, they are uh, necessarily uh, singular uh, at the origin. Otherwise, uh, they cannot, satisfy, cannot be Sonian kernels. Well, uh, what else was done by Sonin in, uh, in his paper? Uh, he derived uh, another very useful uh, result. Namely, uh, he could characterize or introduce a a uh, big class of Sonian kernels in form of the products of some power law functions, this uh, Abel functions, H uh, alpha and H1 minus alpha, mu multiplied with some analytical functions. Uh, and uh, by substituting this form uh, into, into, this, uh, into his condition, he could derive uh, uh, an infinite family of the uh, equations, in fact, linear equations uh, to the coefficients, unknown coefficients uh, uh, Bks, uh, in the case uh, the coefficients Aks are given, and this is a triangle uh, system of equations. So one can solve this equation, one equation uh, after another one, and in this way Sonin uh, could derive his results. Well, uh, uh, this, this, this was already uh, uh, old uh, uh, story, uh, uh, the prehistory uh, of this topic, uh, and the modern story uh, started with this paper by Kochube, General Fractional Calculus, Evolution Equations, and uh, Renewal Processes. A very nice paper. I would recommend uh, everybody who uh, everybody who uh, is, is interested in fractional differential equations uh, to uh, to uh, read this paper. Very nice. Uh, and uh, uh, Kochube uh, <coughs> recognized the meaning of, of the Sonin kernels uh, for fractional calculus because you have seen that these uh, operators introduced already by Sonin. Uh, they have the form uh, of uh, uh, modern, uh, of many uh, uh, fractional integrals and derivatives that are nowadays used. Uh, but form is form. Uh, Kochube, uh, in fact, derived, uh, uh, derived more serious results. Uh, so he was interested in uh, characterization 
of the class of the kernels uh, kappa and k uh, uh, such uh, uh, that ensure uh, the suitable properties uh, of these operators and also fraction, uh, fractional differential equations, both uh, ordinary and uh, uh, and partial. I mean, uh, he looked nach, uh, nach a special class of kernels uh, with the property that uh, uh, the, the correspondent cooperators preserve uh, some very important properties that are uh, uh, useful for applications at, and that are uh, uh, and that the uh, classical equations with integer or order derivatives also possess and in this publication he introduced a uh, class K of the Sonian kernels in uh, and characterize this class in terms of the Laplace transform of course because um, uh, this condition uh, Kappa convolution K at the point T is identically equal to 1 can be, of course, uh, uh, rewritten in the Laplace domain because uh, 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 the Laplace convolution of the, uh, of the, La uh, the the Laplace transform of the Laplace convolution is a product of uh, two Laplace transforms and the Laplace transform of 1 is uh, 1 divided by P. So, of course, uh, uh, here in the Laplace domain we have uh, a very uh, simple relation. Of course, here we, uh, the existence of Laplace transform is necessary, so these two formulas are, are not completely equivalent, but uh, still uh, related. So Kochebe uh, characteri characteri characterized uh, his kernels in terms of the Laplace transforms that should exist, of course. And the most uh, uh, strong requirement uh, uh, by Kochebe was uh, that uh, the Laplace transform of the function k is a Stiltius function. And Stiltius functions uh, uh, are completely monotone functions. Uh, roughly speaking, uh, they can be characterized uh, by the property that uh, they are restriction uh, of the Laplace transform uh, of uh, completely monotone functions to the real positive semi-axis. Uh, it's a special uh, class of functions. And uh, they possess the property that their reciprocals are so-called complete Bernstein functions. And reciprocals, uh, reciprocals uh, are uh, connected, of course, to the to, to another component of the uh, of the pair. Yeah? So uh, this, of course, uh, uh, very uh, heavy uh, property, very strong property. Uh, but still, uh, uh, even if this property uh, is uh, is very strong. Uh, uh, the kernels of the most used uh, and known fractional derivatives nowadays, they, uh, they satisfy this property. Oh, and then Kochube required also some uh, asymptotical uh, properties of the Laplace transform of the function k uh, at the point zero here, at the point infinity. Also strong, uh, uh, strong requirements, but they also as I also satisfied for the most classic, uh, for the most uh, useful time fractional derivatives nowadays, and Kochube also introduced uh, uh, the so-called general fractional derivative in the Caputo sense. Yeah, you see here it's a kind of regu uh, regu uh, regularization of the uh, general fractional derivative in the riemann liouville sense that was introduced by Sonin. And the, uh, you, you already have seen the formula. And under, under some conditions of the function f, it can be represented also in this form. And just to, rem uh, just to remind you on the form of this derivative, it's just the first order derivative applied to this convolution operator uh, with the kernel k. And this operator uh, is referred to uh, in the paper by Kochube as the fractional uh, derivative in the Riemann-Liouville sense. 
and this uh, derivative was referred to in the uh, paper by Kochube as a general fractional derivative in the couple pieces. <coughs> and Kochube mostly considered this fractional derivative because, as Professor uh, Kiryakov already said, uh, 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 in the case of uh, 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 in the case of fractional uh, differential equations, you need some initial conditions. And of course, this form is more preferable because you, you can pose the initial condition in the usual form. Now, what was derived by Kochube for, for, the, uh, for these operators? Uh, well, uh, I already uh, mentioned that uh, uh, these operators uh, uh, are referred to nowadays as the general fractional integrals and derivatives. Of course, in the papers by uh, Sonin, uh, he didn't uh, do this. Uh, he just uh, uh, spoke about uh, uh, integral equations and uh, uh, their solutions. Uh, and uh, uh, in my opinion, uh, of course, it's uh, not uh, automatically... Uh, it, it's... Uh, you, you, one uh, cannot automatically call some operators uh, fractional derivatives on integrals only uh, uh, by, uh, with the only motivation that uh, they are some generalization of the integer or the derivatives and uh, integrals. So you, you need some more uh, some some more justification, and Kochube provided this uh, justification for these operators uh, with the kernels from this uh, class K. Uh, first of all, he showed that uh, uh, in the case uh, we consider the general fractional derivatives of the riemann liouville and uh, Caputo type uh, with the kernels K's, then the, there exist a corresponding general fractional integral with the kernel uh, kappa uh, on the corresponding uh, spaces of functions such that uh, the derivative is the left inverse operator to the uh, integral, so they satisfy the first fundamental theorem of fractional calculus. Of course, uh, uh, this uh, result uh, was derived already by Sonin, yeah? formally, but still, uh, uh, still uh, it's more or less natural. Uh, the second result by Kochube uh, was uh, connected to uh, to the so-called relaxation, uh, fractional relaxation equation uh, with the fractional derivative. This one, uh, important for mechanical uh, uh, models. And Kochube showed that uh, in the case lambda is uh, uh, less than zero, then uh, uh, the solution to this problem has the same properties uh, that uh, uh, the, uh, as the fractional relaxation equation with the integer or the derivatives, namely, uh, there is a unique soli solution, it's continuous on the whole uh, positive real axis, infinity, infinity differentiable, and completely monotone. Very important property uh, for the mechanical problems. Completely monotone functions, they satisfy this uh, uh, <coughs> this uh, inequalities, infi infinitely many inequalities. Of course, ma one can characterize them uh, through the Bernstein uh, theorem, uh, through the Laplace transforms uh, of the positive functions. Well, another result, important result by Kochube was the following one. He considered the Cauchy problem for the this time fractional diff diffusion equation uh, with the uh, general fraction derivative of the Caputo type and showed uh, that the fundamental solution to this equation uh, is, uh, has the same properties compared uh, as, as the uh, normal diffusion equation. So the fundamental solution is infinitely differentiable uh, uh, for all x uh, uh, not equal to zero. Uh, and very important property, it can be interpreted as uh, spatial probability density function involving in time. And th uh, that, me uh, that means, this means that uh, 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 this, uh, such equations can be even pot uh, uh, at least potentially used for uh, modeling of some uh, diffusion processes. 
Well, uh, and these properties, A, B, and C, uh, were used by Kochube to justify uh, these notions, general fractional derivatives and integrals. Yeah? They satisfy these very important properties and uh, can be called, can be interpreted at least uh, in this sense. Well, uh, the next step in the story was uh, a paper that was written uh, uh, together with uh, Masahiro Yamamoto, uh, who is a uh, uh, recognized expert in the so-called inverse problems, and nowadays uh, also in the direct problems for the fractional differential equations. Uh, in this paper, we consider, consider it um, uh, boundary, initial boundary value problems for more general uh, differential equations with the Caputo type general fractional derivatives and with the second order uh, uh, space, uh, uh, space differential operator, not fractional. Uh, of course, the, uh, the second order operator is, uh, uh, should be. Uh, should possess some special property properties, so it uh, should be uh, uniformly, uniformly elliptic operator. Uh, and uh, after some a little bit uh, different conditions, uh, modified modified Kochube conditions, uh, we could also show that uh, 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 the standard uh, initial boundary problems uh, for this more general uh, equation. Uh, also uh, possess the t uh, typical properties uh, that I expected uh, from this kind of models in the integer order case. Uh, we derive some estimates for the general fraction derivatives at the maximum points, and based on this result, we derive the maximum principle for the uh, solutions uh, to this initial value problems, and then uh, a priori, uh, some a priori norm estimates, and... Uh, uh, even derived uh, some uh, existence results uh, for a generalized solution in the Vladimirov sense. Uh, it could be also a topic for, 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 for a uh, special uh, lecture uh, to discuss all these results. would be an interesting topic, in fact, uh, uh, but still I decided to present uh, here uh, uh, some of my recent results. And uh, uh, the story uh, started uh, with uh, this paper, this very uh, recent paper, General Fractional Integrals and Derivative with the Sonian kernels. And my idea was uh, to follow the approach by Kochube uh, combined with the approach by Sonian, because uh, the Kochube conditions, uh, uh, they are very, very restricted, of course. Yeah? And uh, I wanted to investigate uh, both properties would be uh, uh, would be an, uh, what properties would be there if we re relax the conditions on the kernels uh, of these operators, and uh, a more uh, or less natural uh, set of the kernels. Uh, these are kernels that uh, that possess uh, integrable uh, singularity at the origin. So. Uh, Professor Kiryakov already mentioned uh, uh, the space of functions, in fact, introduced by Dimovsky in connection, with, uh, in connection to the operational calculus for the hyperbasal differential operator. Uh, and this class of functions uh, is uh, very natural while, while working with uh, uh, integral operators of convolution type uh, with uh, singular kernels. So you need uh, uh, some suitable uh, conditions. And uh, this, uh, uh, this space, C minus 1, 0, uh, consists of functions that have an integral sim singularity at their region. And uh, uh, at other points, uh, these are just, uh, uh, just um, continuous functions, yeah? not, uh, uh, not analytical functions and uh, uh, without any restriction on, on the asymptotical behavior uh, to, uh, to ensure the existence of the Laplace transform. So uh, this class of the kernels uh, seems to be a big one and more or less natural uh, to, uh, to consider all this theory. And of course, these kernels uh, uh, are... Um, 
have singularities as their region. The kernels uh, kappa and k uh, from this class L1, uh, they uh, should be of, uh, should be of course uh, uh, also Sonian kernels. So they should uh, satisfy this basic condition. So what can be done uh, with the op uh, operators with these kernels? So the so-called uh, general fractional derivative has the same form as in, uh, as in the paper by uh, uh, in, uh, as in the paper by Sonin, and the general fractional derivative has, uh, in the Riemann-Liouville sense, has the same form, uh, already introduced by Sonin, and the general fractional derivative, in the Caputo sense, has the form introduced uh, introduced by uh, Kochube. Uh, but the differences, of course, uh, in this kernels uh, kappa and k. Uh, well, uh, the form of this operator is well known already, starting from uh, the papers by uh, the publications by Sonin. But of course, the, the most important thing is, uh, uh, is in these kernels. If you take uh, uh, some uh, special kernels, uh, like for example the Paolo kernels, then you get uh, very special operators like Riemann Liouville fractional integrals and derivatives and so on. And if you consider here some more general classes of the kernels, then of course uh, uh, you should uh, investigate what properties are still there. Uh, well, particular cases of these operators are well known. Uh, of course, the riemann liouville fractional integral and derivative, the, the so-called uh, multi-term uh, riemann liouville and Caputo fractional derivatives, the so-called uh, uh, fractional derivatives of the distributed order and many other new and no, uh, new and known fractional derivatives. They all uh, have this form. Well, uh, first we start with the basic properties of the fractional integral. Uh, it works uh, in the space C minus one, uh, and the space C minus one uh, consists of all functions that have or can have integral singularity of the power function type at the region. So it's uh, just a product of a uh, power law function multi multiplied uh, with a continuous function. Now, of course, we have here the standard mapping pro property. Uh, we have here the commutativity law. And the index law, by the way, uh, looks like this. So if, if we build a composition of two operators, integral operators of this type, then you have an integral operator with the kernel that is a convolution of the kernels kappa 1 and kappa 2. Uh, and in, in my opinion, this form of the index law is the most natural one. Because normally, if you speak, for example, about the uh, semi-group properties for the riemann liouville fractional integrals, this one, then it's just a consequence, simple consequence, this property from this property. So if you uh, <clears throat> calculate convolution of two power law functions, then you get another power law functions with, uh, with the exponent alpha plus beta. It's just uh, the so-called, uh, 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 at the left-hand side, you have uh, beta, uh, Euler-beta integral, and the Euler beta integral is connected with the Euler uh, gamma integral. It's just a classical formula here. Well, uh, okay. Uh, then uh, uh, the fractional integral has, in this sense, uh, the standard properties uh, that uh, that I expected from the uh, integrals, fractional integrals. What can be uh, said about the fractional derivatives? Of course, the fractional derivatives are left inverse operators. Uh, as, all, uh, as was already showed, uh, in fact, formally by, uh, uh, by uh, Sonin. Uh, but the trick, he, the, the trick here is, of course, to, to find suitable uh, spaces of functions. Yeah? And in the case of the uh, fractional, uh, in the case of the um, uh, general fractional derivative in the riemann liouville uh, sense, we can work on the space C minus 1. Uh, in the case of the general fractional derivative in the Caputo sense, uh, this space should be suitably restricted because uh, uh, the, uh, 
the operators are not uh, defined on the on the space, and uh, uh, then uh, uh, I introduce this space c minus one k uh, that consists of uh, all functions that can be represented as the fractional integral uh, with the kernel k. Uh, well, uh, if you consider the theory of the uh, Riemann-Liouville fractional integrals and derivatives, for example, uh, and uh, uh, read the book by some Kokil Basmarichev, uh, theory of the fractional integrals and derivatives, uh, fractional integrals and derivatives series and applications, then of course uh, also such uh, spaces appear there, so they are more or less natural. And um, uh, this space of function C minus 1 uh, K can be characterized also in terms of the fractional integrals with the kernel uh, kappa. Uh, and uh, 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 this condition means that uh, the fractional integral with the kernel kappa uh, uh, belongs to the space C minus 1, uh, 1 uh, that consists of all functions uh, with the property that the first order derivative belongs to the space C minus 1. And then we need another condition, this one. Uh, and uh, this characterization of the space C minus uh, 1 uh, K is very similar uh, to the characterization, classical characterization of this space of functions, of the space of functions that, that can be represented as the Riemann-Liouville integral of the order 1 minus alpha. Uh, uh, in the Lebesgue Lebe space of integrated functions, and then uh, this space can be characterized uh, in the similar uh, manner. So uh, uh, some conditions on the fractional integral are posed, and then uh, a special fractional integral, riemann liouville fractional integral, the point zero should be zero. Uh, this characterization is used uh, normally uh, by treating the Abel integral equation. So we have here a very similar object. And then uh, uh, we, uh, uh, we go to the uh, second fun fundamental theorem of, of fractional calculus. Uh, that is, uh, we consider the composition uh, of, the in, uh, of the integral and derivative. Yeah. No. Of course... Uh, no, please, Professor, yes, this one is better. Yeah. <laughs> of course, um, all of you are aware of the... Uh, two fundamental theorems of calculus that are very important, of course, and characterize, in, in a sense, uh, the integrals and derivatives. So the first fundamental theorem says that the composition of the first order derivative and the uh, definite integral is uh, just the identity function. And then the first fundamental theorem says that the composition uh, of the uh, integral and the derivative is not an identity, but you have here some initial conditions. Yeah? And of course, if you consider the nth order derivative here and the repeated integral, then you have here other initial condition conditions and uh, uh, these uh, uh, terms that are left here, they determine the natural form of the initial conditions while considered, uh, considering the fractional differential equations with these operators. Yeah? Uh, and you see here that uh, in the case of the Caputo type fractional derivative, we have uh, the same formula. Uh, and this formula uh, is of course uh, valid uh, also for the Caputo fractional derivative. You, we have here the same formula for this general uh, uh, fractional derivative in the Caputo form, and we have here the same uh, practically uh, <coughs> reminding uh, term uh, that determines the form of the suitable initial conditions. Uh, one more remark. Uh, we have here practically only one initial condition, and uh, that, uh, that means that uh, the so-called generalized order of this operator is between 0 and 1. Of course, uh, uh, in the case we speak about the uh, 
we can say we look at the fractional derivatives, we have uh, the parameter alpha, and we can say alpha is between 0 and 1, so the, the order of the derivative and so on. And here we have uh, some, some objects with the, uh, with the kernels, how to determine the, the order of this uh, operator. For example, in this way, in this way, uh, we see how many initial conditions are, are needed while dealing with these operators. Uh, later on, uh, tomorrow, I will introduce a um, uh, generalization of these operators, uh, generalization for the case um, of the generalized order, uh, arbitrary generalized order. Yeah. And for the Caputo fractional derivative, as we already said, we have this property. And uh, the second fundamental theorem uh, for the fract uh, general fractional derivative in the riemann liouville sense uh, is more complicated. Uh, by the way, uh, uh, in the publication by Kochube, uh, he uh, <coughs> derived uh, for this, of course, for, the, for, for his operators uh, of the Caputo type, he derived this formula, second fundamental formula for the Caputo frictional derivative. But then, uh, for the riemann liouville fractional derivative, the formula that was derived by Kochubey kappa looked like this one. Looked like this one. So, uh, the composition of the general fractional integral with the kernel kappa and the uh, general fractional derivative in the riemann liouville sense is equal to f of t. This was the formula derived by uh, Bay. That is, of course, not wrong. Yeah? The matter is, uh, uh, is the space of functions. So, uh, in the publication of Bay, he restricted uh, uh, he, he considered such spaces of functions that we, we had here just no initial conditions. And it was not an easy uh, problem to, uh, to recognize that uh, uh, even in this case we have some initial conditions. Uh, what, uh, what is the form of these initial conditions? And the form uh, of the initial conditions, so if, if you consider the composition of the general fractional integral with the kernel kappa, and the general fractional derivative of the, in the riemann liouville sense with the kernel k, then we have the initial condition in this form. Yeah? In fact, this is the general fractional integral with the kernel k uh, applied to the function f uh, evaluated at the point zero. <coughs> and this means that if we consider the fractional differential equations, that then the initial condition uh, fractional differential equations with, the, uh, with this operator, fractional derivative, the, the initial condition should be posed in this form, natural form. Of course, uh, uh, this uh, formula is valid uh, on um, a special space of functions, different one, not the same, that uh, we, uh, we had for the first fundamental theorem. Here we, we have the space uh, C minus uh, 1, uh, K1, uh, and here we also have one initial condition, and this space is also natural one. Uh, it consists of all functions from the space C minus 1 <coughs> with the property that the uh, riemann liouville fractional derivative with the kernel K also belongs to the space C minus 1. Uh, uh, if we project these definitions to the case of the integer order derivatives, then the space corresponds to the space of the continuously differentiable functions, and the space C minus 1K we, uh, we had earlier corresponds to the case of the functions that can be represented as definite integrals of continuous functions. Yeah. And that means that uh, it's a more general space. Uh, well, in the case of the um, uh, riemann liouville fractional integral, uh, the Sonian kernels uh, kappa and k are known, and the sec uh, second fundamental theorem of fractional calculus is also very well known. Uh, you see here 
that uh, this power law function is exactly the kernel of the fractional integral here and here we have also fractional integral but with the order 1 minus alpha yeah? exactly like this one kappa is uh, kappa is the kernel of the fractional integral uh, power law function and here we have fractional integral but with the kernel k not kappa could be a good moment for break. Yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, I already made that this remark yeah, about the spaces. So okay, okay. Uh, I posed some open uh, problems, but uh, probably they they will be presented not today but tomorrow. Uh, and uh, I also think that uh, we can stop here and continue uh, discussion uh, tomorrow. Uh, you see here that we will start with some generalizations and I will show you also some very nice things including uh, convolution series uh, and uh, uh, convolution Taylor formulas and series and also operational calculus for these derivatives. So, uh, for today I just managed to, to make a very short introduction but the main stuff will be presented then tomorrow. Thank you very much for your attention. motivating for a clear presentation with uh, <coughs> a lot of motivation also for applied problems so I think that uh, so we can um, questions remarks unless some remarks I think take questions we can postpone to uh, small questions yes. regarding the, the finding the initial condition mm -hmm. uh, can you consider the multi-term case as well because there's something Kernel might be multiple term as well. As I know, in Riemann level cases, if you have multiple Riemann level de uh. derivatives, then yeah, yeah. initial yeah, yeah. conditions, number of initial conditions might. Go. Yes, yes, you are right. Yeah, uh, we can consider also equations with the multiple derivatives, and of course, uh, then you you need corresponding. Uh, uh, initial conditions with the uh, corresponding integrals. Yeah, so the situation is more or less complicated here. But even for the Riemann-Liouville uh, fractional derivatives, uh, in the multi multiple case, uh, uh, not so easy to uh, determine the right initial conditions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Very good. I, I suggest we so the next <coughs> so we have a lunch break now. Um, so we continue with uh, lectures by Professor Raguza at two o'clock, and uh, now I think that we should have uh, sandwiches and some drinks available. Yeah, now we have a different type of sandwiches and four for each one, but there are.